Hi, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Our Three Last Name Family. I made this. This is why there's been no video for the last couple of weeks. Well, this her. I had the baby on January 14th. And I have obviously been very busy and sleep deprived. And I think those are probably reason enough for me to maybe not have had time or energy to have made a video yet. But today is the day. Like it's time to get back on the wagon. It's time for us to spend time together again. So today I thought I would tell the story of the day when she came into the world. Uh, so you guys know, if you had watched other videos, you know that we had a scheduled induction for January 14th. My due date was one week later, but we had scheduled the induction for January 14th. You guys look at this, but just, she looks like a little old man sometimes. Like right now. Anyway. The 14th. So we were supposed to be at the hospital at 1230. So 30 minutes after midnight on the 14th. Well, the 13th, my doctor called me and asked if we could uh, push my induction to five o'clock because there was another mom who was a first time mom that was being induced and they expected that she was going to take longer. So would I mind to have mine scheduled at five? Well, in my head, I was like, well, I think I even said to her, I was like, no, that's actually awesome because then I can get some sleep because if you have a midnight induction, what are you going to go to bed at like 10 o'clock and sleep for an hour? No one's going to do that. You're going to be too excited to sleep. So I, but if you have a five o'clock one, then you have the potential to sleep for like six hours, which would be way better. So that was our plan. I went with that. I also asked her at that point, could we try instead of tar starting Pitocin to induce my labor, could we kind of augment labor by um, breaking my water? first and see if that, depending on how dilated I was, because remember also, I was already dilated to a three. So could I have my water broken first and see if that kickstarts anything and moves anything along? And she was like, yeah, that's fine. That's totally fine. So we got to the hospital at right before five on the 14th, um, filled out our paperwork because there's, you know, enough, the, like, practically enough paperwork for when you get the mortgage to a house when you go in to have a baby. Maybe that's just for inductions. I don't remember with my first child, which was a spontaneous. Anyway, side note. Um, so I'm filling out my paperwork. The nurse came in and put in my IV so they could start fluids because they always, you know, need to give you fluids. And then they hook me up to the blood pressure cuff also. And the nurse immediately looks at me and says, are you, are you okay? Do you feel okay? And I was like, yeah. She was like, okay, um, are you feeling any, any, do you hear any ringing in your ears? Are, are you experiencing any blurred vision? And I was like, no. <laughs> she was like, okay, well, your blood pressure's through the roof. And then I thought back for a minute and uh, at my most recent doctor's appointment, the nurse had said, your blood pressure is a little high. It's not preeclampsia or anything like that at this point. Um, it's not anything we're super worried about, but it is a little high. After the doctor finishes talking to you, stick around and let me take your blood pressure again. Well, the doctor finished talking to me and didn't say anything after that about like, hey, make sure you stick around or whatever. And then I, I didn't like jet out of the office or anything. And the nurse didn't say anything to me about staying. So I just left. I thought everything was fine. Like maybe the doctor had looked at the number and been like, oh, nah, that, that's fine. She's fine. After she examined me. Well, no. <laughs> uh, my blood pressure 
actually continued to worry them to the point, even after I delivered to the point that they sent me home with blood pressure medicines. Like right after the nurse, the nurse said that to me, you know, as I was signing, basically signing into the hospital, they had me remove all my jewelry, which I had never been asked to do, even when I delivered at that hospital. They were trying to prep me in case they had to take me in for an emergency C-section if I went into some kind of shock or something, I guess. It was very dramatic. Anyway, they kept asking me if I felt badly, if I felt dizzy, or if I was experiencing blurred vision, or if there was ringing in my ears, and every time I would be like, no, I, I really think I'm just excited. <laughs> I have a little bit of white coat syndrome, but I really think I'm just excited. I, I feel fine, actually. My heart doesn't feel like it's racing, nothing. I'm, I feel fine. <sighs> anyway, so we finish all of that, and the nurse comes to check me. So by now, it's about six o'clock in the morning. And she checked me and I was at like a three and a half. I was so disappointed because I had just said to Dan, I was like, okay, I feel like it's going to be one of two things. I feel like when they check me, we always, <laughs> I would always try to have like these preemptive discussions with him. Like, what do you think this is going to be? What about this? What do you think this is going to be? You know, I don't know why that was some kind of thrill to me, but it was, God bless him. Anyway, so I had said, I think that either I'm going to be exactly the same as when I was at the doctor's office or I'm going to be like a six and a half. Like I'm going to like, we're almost a transition. We're almost ready to pop this baby out. Well, then they checked me and I was only at three and a half and I was like, okay, um, I pulled, I didn't pull her aside, but the nurse came in and I was like, can I ask you a question? She was like, sure. I said, am I locked in to having my water broken first or could we just go ahead and start Pitocin? And she was like, no, you can start Pitocin first. Cause I was like, because I, my body's not, it's not interested. It's not interested today. We're going to have to like give it some help. So she was like, that's, let me check with the doctor, but that should be fine. I said, also, could we just go ahead and figure out where the anesthesiologist is? Because as you guys know, my threshold for pain is like, it doesn't even exist. I don't have a pain and I, no, it's not even, shouldn't, it's not even a relationship I want to have. So I knew as soon as the Pitocin contractions would start that I wanted to have already been given relief from them. So all of those arrangements were made and at about 7.30, they brought the Pitocin in and hooked that up to the IV that was already in my arm. About eight o'clock, the anesthesiologist came in and started to give me the epidural. And um, she had a little bit of trouble, like finding the right spot, but it made me, it made me feel better that she was doing the work to find the right spot. Cause like, you know, if you don't, there's, I don't know, paralysis. Uh, also, let me pause here and do a little bit of explaining about the needle because everybody's really freaked out about the epidural needle because everybody hears that it's just this big, huge, long, super long needle that they just jam all the way into your back. Nay and no wise, um, it is a big gauge needle, but before they put that needle anywhere close to the skin of your back, they... Put, they inject uh, a numbing agent that comes in a little, little bitty tiny needle. So pretty much if you were able to tolerate getting your blood drawn at the doctor's office, like you had to do like every visit probably, then you can tolerate this numbing agent needle. And then by the time they use the epidural needle, I told Natalie, Natalie asked me what it felt like. And I told her it didn't actually hurt. It felt like if somebody was taking their knuckle and kind of digging their knuckle into your back. So uncomfortable, but not actually even painful. And you guys know, like if, if the epidural was painful, I would opt out because again, the pain issue. Um, also the length of the needle, it was explained to me once that the needle is so long because it only has to go into your spine a certain amount, but people's bodies outside of that spine are different. People have different thicknesses of layers of fat or muscle or skin even. So that big long needle is meant to accommodate 
all different body sizes. They don't make different lengths, they just make the one length. And then if you're a very small person with very little body fat, they only have to use the very tip of it. And then if you're a person with a larger amount of body fat, then they've got, pardon me, they've got enough needle to make sure that they can get it into the right spot in your spine. They don't like <laughs> all the way into your spine. That's not how it goes. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. So anyway, they gave me the epidural and I felt great because I hadn't really, I had started to feel uncomfortable, but really not, it was starting to get intense, but nothing that I, you know, nothing like Sally's labor and delivery. That has to be its own, that has to be its own video. I'm sorry, you guys, I can't even go into any detail about that. So I got the epidural. It started working like a champ to the point that they were, <laughs> they were saying, Oh, we got dead legs, like in referring to my legs, like they were nothing. They were trying to like turn me over and my leg would just like, like slide off the bed, which, you know, they didn't really want to happen because, you know, woman in labor laying in the floor, it's not as, it's not as good. Anyway, that was fun though. Oh, we got dead legs here. And then I'm like knowing that that was me. Anyway, whatever. Made for a funny story. So got the ep got into the hospital, started Pitocin at 7.30, got the epidural by 8 o'clock, 8.30, something like that. And then, um, then they came in to break my water. And um, the epidural was working so great, I didn't even feel any of that. Nothing. Like, the breaking of your water isn't really painful anyway because there's not... I don't think there's nerve endings connected to the amniotic sac. Not, no. So it doesn't hurt anyway, but I didn't even feel like the rush of fluid or anything like that. Cause, cause dead legs. Uh, so then it was like 9.30 by that point and they checked me again and I was at about uh, five and a half. About a five and a half at about 9.30. And the nurse left the room and, oh, sorry, guys, I have to cross my legs the opposite direction because this little lady's sitting in my lap and putting my legs to sleep. Um, the nurse left the room and I have Dan there and my friend who was there to take, um, hopefully, video for us and still photography. Well, we found out that we were not allowed to actually take any video um, until after the baby was delivered um, umbilical cord cut, baby cleaned up and wrapped in a blanket. The hospital just does not allow any video. So that was all right. We got still photography. But anyway, my friend was there. And my friend has not had any children yet. And of course, my husband, I explained to you guys, this was his first biological child and he'd never been in the room when someone was born before. So I was like the expert I'm not an expert, but I, I, you know, I've done this a couple times before, so I had a basic idea of how things should go, so I told them, all right, guys, just so you know, in inductions, when there's Pitocin introduced, generally the rule is things last for about um, a centimeter an hour, and with me being at uh, five and a half at 9.30 in the morning, I figured, all right, it'll be like two o'clock, and then this little lady's just going to introduce herself to us. So I decided that I was going to take a little nap. And so I took a little cat nap and I just, you know, nothing hurt because I had the epidural. And then I woke up and um, Dan found the hospital TV had like this on demand movie section. And one of the movies was Mean Girls. And so I was like, all right, let's do it. So he turns on Mean Girls for me and then I fall back to sleep. And um, I woke up again about 11, 25, 11, 30, and I was starting to feel pressure when the contractions would come. Well, my epidural was set up with a, a push button pump. So the nurse told me, 
Okay, if you start to feel pressure, if you start to feel uncomfortable again, you can push this button and deliver more of the medication to your spine. I was like, well, that's great. Um, she just said, just let me know when you're going to push the button, obviously, so they can have an idea of what you're injecting into your body. Because nurses, you know, they, all of that. Um, so I was like, all right, I think I'm, I'm starting to feel this and I would kind of like to make sure I push the button before I really start experiencing pain because from here on out, things are only going to get more intense. And um, so I called her in and I was like, I'm starting to feel some pressure um, So with the contraction. So I was wondering if I could push the button again. And she was like, yeah, that's fine. Let me, um, let me check you. And when I said I was feeling pressure, um, when you are, when your body is ready to push, you have this weird pressure that feels like everybody just describes it as like, you feel like you're ready to push like you're pooping, except you're not, you're not. It's just like a very similar sensation, honestly, because it's a similar area on the body. But anyway, that wasn't what I felt. It just felt like just kind of like a squinching, like a contraction, like a very dull contraction, like intense, but obviously I couldn't feel it because of the medicines that were coursing their way through my spine. So anyway, she just wanted to check me and I figured, all right, if I was a five and a half a couple hours ago, I'll probably be six and a half, seven at least, maybe an eight, maybe we'll see how we're doing. So she checks me. And this is like, like I said, like 1130. She checks me and she just very matter of factly goes, all right, um, so you're ready. And um, well, first when she said that, I thought maybe she, I thought she was saying I was ready to be able to push the epidural button. But then she goes, you're ready. I'm going to go get the doctor uh, so you can start pushing. And I was like, what? She was like, and I start looking around at my friend and my husband and I'm like, start pushing and she was like yeah you're at a 10 and I was like I am I felt so stupid because <laughs> like, there's a baby in there <laughs> like, um ma'am have you actually done this before but it was it had only been four hours they started the Pitocin four hours prior my first two labors were 18 hours a piece. My second labor, which I felt like was terribly fast, was nine hours. And here I am pushing after four hours. It was crazy. So I was like, okay, uh, all right. I just, and they, they just were like, yeah. You're ready. I was like, okay. I was like trying to make jokes about like to cover up the fact that I was behaving completely embarrassingly, you know, saying like, well, I was about to put my makeup on. I don't even have time to put my makeup on. So anyway, um, so the doctor comes in and I couldn't feel when the contractions were coming because dead legs, remember. Uh, so she was watching the monitor over my shoulder and she was telling me when to push. So when you push, um, you, you count to 10. There's like two or three rounds of counting to 10. So you, they say push and you, you know, put your chin to your chest or you just kind of crunch down however they tell you to or whatever feels comfortable to you. And you count to 10 either two or three times. Like you count to 10, take a breath, take a breath, count to 10, and then that's one push or you do it one more time and that's considered like one push, I think. So I started that first round of counting to 10 and the doctor started to look really excited and I was like, okay, I think things are going well. She looks very pleased and I could not feel a thing. Uh, so then I go through, we, they count to 10 and the doctor says, okay, give me one more little push. And I was like, so I did it. And then she had me do it a second time. And then um, she was like, okay, I'm going to have you do it one more time. And then I did it one more time. So like bearing down, pushing for a total of 30 seconds and out slipped this little baby. That was it. I went through one round of pushes. So one push, 30 seconds of pushing. So that entire process took seven minutes. 
and I did, none of it hurt. My friend took still photography of what was happening and instead of like my face being squinched up from being in pain, I'm like trying to look over my belly and I have a smile on my face. It's hilarious. I think I'll put some of those pictures just of my face, not of my lady business because that's not, we don't want that on Instagram. I don't want that on Instagram. My mother, I'm positive, doesn't want that on Instagram. Anyway, my face is hilarious because I'm literally pushing out my baby at that moment with a smile on my face. And uh, she delivered the baby um, who was six pounds, five ounces, and 19 inches long. She started this really beautiful screaming and um, had just everything just the way it should be. And my doctor was exceptionally proud of the umbilical cord. She like held it up. She was like, this is, look at this. This is one of the prettiest cords I've ever seen. I feel proud. So there was that. Um, anyway, and I didn't tear, which sorry for that. But if you've had kids, you, or you're having some like, but that doctor's just amazing though. I feel like maybe nobody would tear if they were, cause I didn't tear the last time either. Anyway, it was great. It was great. Uh, so then that was it. My recovery, like going to the the room that where we spent the next couple of days was relatively easy. Um, I had a crazy nurse, but all the other nurses were great. Like y'all, I'm gonna have to go do a video about this nurse later. She was nuts. Anyway, um, everybody else was great. The baby has done great. We're obviously home from the hospital now. Um, we have been for a week and a half and, um, other than being a little jaundiced, which all of my babies were, um, she's done fantastically. And she's, this was the most hilarious part, is all of this hair. All my other babies were bald. So I was just totally thrown when I pushed out a baby with a ton of hair. And if you get it wet, it curls. So funny. The only thing it like smashes down, like the curls go away if you smash them down. But besides that. Besides that, she's doing great and I'm doing great. Um, it was a really cool last one. It was a really cool close to that chapter of my life. To be able to enjoy all of it with a smile on my face. And because I wasn't in pain, I was totally lucid and just... A part of everything that was going on it was it was wonderful um, and now we have this little lady and um, the shop is closed for business but I mean what a great what a great ending what a great ending to this little to this part of the story within my story and we have her full name is Audrey Michaela Hazel Sheon, and Audrey is after Audrey Hepburn, because y'all see over my shoulder all of this. It's actually my husband's. Like, he is this gigantic Audrey Hepburn fan and has been for decades, so he wanted to name his daughter after Audrey Hepburn, and I think she was an amazing person that I certainly would not mind my daughter being like, so... I was all about it. Um, Michaela is actually, um, it's spelled Michael with an A after my little brother. Um, all my kids have some part of their name coming from my side and that's her part is after my little brother. Um, and then Hazel is Dan's great aunt's name and she was like an amazing person in his life. Very significant for him. So he wanted to include that name and then of course her last name is her daddy's last name so uh, I feel like this is a little rambly but all of my stories kind of are <laughs> and um, I'm really glad I'm not pregnant anymore and I'm really glad that the prize at the end of this 
crazy awful pregnancy was this amazing baby. And um, thank you guys if you've watched this to the end. And thank you for um, watching another episode of our three last name family.